Hey folks, my name is Charlie. I'm here to show you a little cool visual technique called parallax, and uh, mo most in particular, parallax scrolling. And my title here is Scroll is the New Click, which is actually not true at all. Uh, click is still click, and scroll is just a, another technique we can use to add depth and control to the user uh, in our websites. So first off, what is parallax? Um, parallax is a visual technique where the position of an object kind of differs depending on your, pos on, on, you know, your movement. So basically, as the view viewpoint, so me, moves side to side, the objects in the distance are going to move a little bit slower than someone in the foreground, for example, James. Um, and here's a nice visual representation of what that's going to look like. So basically, parallax scrolling is an attempt to duplicate this technique using scroll. Um, and then what it does is it gives a set of 2D images depth, so creating this Mario into this Mario. Not quite the same way, but um, it is in practice. So if you think of our websites as just a bunch of images, so every container, every you know, block of text, they're all just an image. And then we have a foreground, we have backgrounds, and we combine all these images together to give our websites a sense of depth and a sense of 3D. So here are a couple of examples of parallax. And obviously, Parallax isn't just used for websites. It can be used for animations, such as the top left corner, where the foreground is moving a lot quicker than the background, giving a sense of speed. Or in video games, as we've all played Mario, and uh, one of the techniques they use in Mario is to make the background move a lot slower than the foreground to make the game look a lot more interesting. Uh, in the top right corner is an example of parallax photography. Again, one more example to really hammer at home. The Background image stays still. The, media, the image in the middle kind of z uh, moves at a semi-fast pace, and the one in the foreground moves fastest. So let's see some website examples. This is my favorite example of parallax scrolling. It's very, very simple. But basically, as you scroll down, you can see that the foreground moves a lot quicker than the background, which kind of stays still, giving this 3D valley effect. Something a little bit more interesting is this Lexus, um, this Lexus site. And it kind of tells you a story by scrolling. So as you scroll down, you can see the DNA kind of comes in through the side, and it goes down. And it's just, it's just beautiful. One more example is this is kind of a horizontal parallax. So this little shopping cart goes to the shop, it gets a bunch of items, so on and so forth. Oh, and the turkey goes into the oven. That's, that, that's amazing. That's just, that's incredible. Um, there's other examples I can show you guys, but you know, for the sake of time and for the sake of you not seeing me up here talk for longer, I'm just going to keep going. So what I want to do is I want to create a parallax component in React. So how are we going to do that? Well, some important considerations to take in are we're going to need some kind of event handler for the scrolling effect. Um, we're probably going to use CSS properties, so either transform 3D or just transforming the top property in CSS to simulate animation. Um, we're going to have to have you know, props.children in there so we can wrap wrap other elements inside this parallax scroll element in order to transform that. And we're going to want to customize the parallax div through a style object as well. So event handler is just very simple. On your component did mount, and component did will unmount. You're going to have a add event list listener scroll, and it's going to have taken a callback function, which is this dot handle scroll. Um, one issue with having an event handler on scroll is that it gets called about a billion times per second. So you're going to want to throttle that. And what you can use is low dash throttle, or you can write your own throttle function, which is really, which is what I did on the right-hand side. And what throttling does, it, it makes sure that this function only gets called like once every 200 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds instead of once every millisecond. The next thing we have is this callback function, which is handle scroll, as I described from last time. Um, and the important things to know here is that there's a window.scrolly. And which is your current page top. And basically what window.scrolly does, it gives you the position of your scroll. So if you, if you scroll down, that's going to increase, essentially. Um, we also have a ref. So this.refs.parallaxelement.style.top. And what a ref is, 
is basically a way to reference the DOM node that you just created. So when we're rendering a React element, we're, we're creating these DOM nodes, right? And if we want access to that DOM node in order to change the CSS properties of it, we're going to need to have a reference in the render. So this is a render, and again, you can see we have a reference to parallax element. So if we go back to before, this.ref.parallax element, and then we can change the style and the top element of the style to our new top. And the last thing I described was kind of having a style object. Um, if we go back to our render, you can see style takes in the state, which is um, just a bunch of, bunch of different properties that we want to have. So if you want to give it a background color, we can give it a background color, background image, uh, background positioning, the Z index, top, left, right, height, width, so on and so forth. All right, and we're going to show you a quick example of how that works. So this is just one image wrapped in parallax. Give me a second to pull up some code. So this is just one image in here. Um, Z index 0, speed of 10. And you can see as we go, the new top is getting lower and lower as it go, goes up and up the page. Something a little bit more interesting is going to be just parallax. And in this element, we have a lot of different parallax components. So we're going to have a picture of New York, a picture of Ibiza, um, a picture of Ibiza text. And this is banana. Just ignore that. And we import our parallax element. We set a speed, a Z index, the top, and an image for those. And inside here, we're not, instead of setting an image, we're just basically giving it children, giving another div, a container, essentially. And let's see how that looks. There we go. Nice and simple. How much time do I have left? Really? Wow, I went through that really fast then. OK, <laughs> let, me, let me explain the scrolling a little bit more then. Uh, in our parallax component here, this handle scroll is essentially how all the magic happens. We want the two things that we need to set are speed and top. So top is essentially how far it is from the top of the screen. Um, and one other important property to set when you're doing parallax is make, make sure your positioning is absolute. So it's uh, always on a certain part of the page. It's not relative to anything else. And in order to get the new top, all we do is we're going to take the current, the current top, um, then we're going to subtract the current page top, which is you know how far you've scrolled, times the speed. So the faster the speed, the bigger that el the bigger that value is going to be, and the faster it's going to scroll off the screen. And at the end, we set the style, the reference style to this new top element. And that's it. That's parallax scrolling in a nutshell.